Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Robinson delivers 13,000th helicopter. Also, EAA begins Project 21 museum expansion, and CTA and AOVSI speak out against navigation easements that will hurt drone ops. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. Robinson is celebrating a massive achievement after delivering 13,000 helicopters. The last one was on April 23rd. The milestone helicopter R44 serial number 14438 was delivered to longtime Robinson dealer Sky Helicopters of Dallas, Texas. SN 14438 has a brand new paint scheme and is equipped with the latest in R44 options, a lithium ion battery, heated seats, and a 4K cockpit video camera. The aircraft also includes a well-configured glass panel featuring Garmin 700L TXI, GTN 650XI Navigator, and a Genesis Helisas Autopilot. Sky President Ken Piat wanted a new generation R44 to round out the company's fleet. We purchased this R44 for our Part 135 air taxi and tour operations, said Piat, because we needed a safe and reliable helicopter that can fly all day, every day. A dealer since 1996, this latest acquisition puts Sky Robinson's fleet at 27. Robinson Helicopter Company has come a long way since 1979 when its first two-place R-22 was delivered. Fast forward 42 years. Today's Robinsons are offered in a multitude of sizes and configurations. Founded in 1973, Robinson Helicopter Company is now the world's leading manufacturer of civil helicopters. After the break, orbital management swap at the ISS. Details after these messages. Aviation Safety Resources is disrupting the market for aircraft emergency parachute recovery systems. ASR systems are smaller, lighter weight, and offer longer repack cycles than similar products available in the current market. ASR has a recovery system available for every type of aircraft. Sport, experimental, light sport, general aviation, urban air mobility, vertical takeoff and landing, electric propulsion, and unmanned aerial systems. Find the right product for your aircraft at AviationSafetyResources.com. When adventure is calling, the Bori by Aero Volga is the plane you need to answer the call. Bori's composite design is simple, reliable, and economical, with impressive performance and no gimmicks. Designed for the wilderness and proven durability in a flight around the Arctic Circle, the Bori has what it takes to handle your next adventure. Featuring two large cargo compartments, a comfortable modern cockpit, and a Rotax 912 power plant, the Bori Amphibian is now available in Canada. Experience the Bori for yourself at FlightSimple.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're going to be summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The ISS has a new commander now as four astronauts prepare for their return to Earth this Saturday. The four SpaceX Crew-1 astronauts have a new splashdown date after mission managers waved off Wednesday's planned departure due to weather conditions at the landing site. The quartet of Michael Hopkins, Victor Glover, Shannon Walker, and Soichi Naguchi is now targeted as splashdown off the coast of Florida for Saturday at around 11.36. Walker handed over the station command Tuesday to Akihiko Hoshide from JAXA. Because some people don't know how to behave, the FAA is proposing civil penalties for three passengers. The FAA has proposed civil penalties of 31,000, of more than 16,000, and more than 14,000 against 
three passengers for allegedly interfering with and in two cases assaulting flight attendants who instructed them to obey cabin crew instruction and various federal regulations. The FAA notes that it's strictly enforcing a zero-tolerance policy towards passengers who cause disturbances on flights, fail to obey flight crew instructions in violation of the FAA's regulations, or engage in conduct prescribed by federal law. Law enforcement rescue two people in the Rio Grande Valley. CBP Air and Marine Operations partnered with U.S. Border Patrol and Kennedy County Sheriff's Office deputies to rescue two individuals near an emergency call location in the Rio Grande Valley area. On April 12th, while on patrol in the Rio Grande Valley sector, a NASOCSA PC-12 crew responded to a 911 call to locate a lost child in the Rio Grande Valley. The PC-12 crew located two distressed and lost individuals in the brush near a ranch road and coordinated with the Rio Grande Valley Sector Border Patrol agents to assist. With a mandatory 14-day quarantine period for travelers, Canada has some of the strictest travel and border measures in the world. The Public Health Agency of Canada has been monitoring case data and through mandatory testing upon entry into Canada, has detected a disproportionately higher number of cases amongst individual traveling on flights originating from India and Pakistan. Transport Canada has issued a no temp to suspend all commercial and private passenger flights from India and Pakistan for 30 days. Well, that does it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's return to the rest of the news. EAA begins Project 21 Museum Expansion. EAA's Project 21 initiative, including the first expansion of the EAA Aviation Center in Oshkosh in more than 20 years, will bring year-round aviation education and training to current and future aviators. Groundbreaking for the two-story, 30,000-square-foot facility connected to the EAA Aviation Museum took place on Monday, April 26th, with EAA and community leaders present. While the EAA Aviation Museum highlights more than a century of accomplishments in personal flight, a major part of EAA's mission to grow participation in aviation is to offer high-level programming for current and future pilots, said Jack Pelton, EAA CEO and chairman of the board. The $6.2 million project, completely funded via a capital campaign separate from EAA member dues, will feature an innovative pilot proficiency center and a hands-on youth education center. These facilities are adjacent to the museum's current Eagle Hangar and will allow individuals and groups to experience all of EAA's resources on a year-round basis. The Pilot Proficiency Center features a state-of-the-art skill building and training center for GA pilots. It combines relevant safety forums with challenging simulator training sessions that address key flight safety issues. After these messages, CTA and AUVSI speak out against legislation introduced in many states. Those details after the break. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher, or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. At Diamond Aircraft, innovation is in our DNA. Whether you're taking to the skies for training or business travel, every aircraft in Diamond's lineup features innovative technology, an industry-leading safety record, superior performance and efficiency, and a comfortable flying experience. No other company has pioneered as many aviation firsts, achieved more milestones, or received the same amount of industry praise as Diamond. Discover why Diamond Aircraft is one of the most trusted manufacturers in aviation at diamondaircraft.com. Whether you're charting a steady course, or pushing for the ceiling. Hartzell Propeller has been elevating flight for over 100 years. It's in our passion for engineering and research. It's in our dedication to testing the limits of performance and creating propellers that are as safe as they are sexy. Now, together with our dedicated family of companies, we're propelling the future of aviation. We are Hartzell Propeller, built on honor. 
Welcome back. The Consumer Technology Association and AVSI have expressed concern regarding legislation introduced in several states, including Louisiana, Mississippi, Texas, and West Virginia. Those are the states that are considering navigation easements, new restrictions on drone operations that would divide airspace, impose leasing, and in some cases, fee collection. CTA is concerned about the increasing number of state-level bills that would restrict drone operations and essentially create toll roads in the skies, said Douglas Johnson, Vice President of Technology Policy, CTA. If enacted, this type of legislation will curtail industry growth and harm local drone businesses and all those who benefit from this versatile technology, from farmers to rural residents or homebound patients. We need a continuation of national rules and approaches from the FAA, not a patchwork of conflicting and unsafe state laws that divide the airspace and increase costs for consumers and drone operators, said Michael Robbins, Executive Vice President of Government and Public Affairs, AUVSI. We need to ensure that drones can continue to advance and bring new opportunities, jobs, and services to cities and states across the U.S. Drones provide solutions for delivering essential supplies during the COVID-19 pandemic to helping first responders during emergencies. That does it for our show today. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. You can catch episodes of Airborne on Roku and Fire TV. Just search for Air News or Airborne in the directory. And don't forget to follow us on social media and feel free to comment with story ideas or just to say hi. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.